Namshukuru Mungu kwa sababu ya kusudi lake katika mwezi huu wa sita And all that we can do is to allow him to minister to our spirits and to work the transformation in us. Bwana asifiwe sana. Katika mwezi huu kitu moja ambacho nimekuwa nikiisikia kwa sauti katika maisha yangu ni kukubali moyo wangu kuundwa kwa sababu kila siku Mungu ako kazini akiunda watu wake. God does not just want people to follow him. God want to transform people. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you see when you go to the scriptures from the time that Adam rebelled and the the image of God somehow was mad in the life of man. Maniko inatuambia alipomuita Noah kitu cha kwanza alimwambia nataka kuanzisha kizazi kipya na wewe. That's transformation. Alipokutana na Ibrahimu akamwambia I want to make you into a great nation. Na ni kweli alimbadilishia mpaka jina. Alipokutana na Musa kuna mambo pia alibadilisha ndani yake. Hallelujah. And even in the New Testament when he met with Peter and the other disciples who were fishing he told them follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Wokovu and the walk of godliness is a walk of transformation. Bwana asifiwe sana. So fungua moyo wako hata wakati huu tunaposikia neno na uamini ya kwamba kuna kitu kitabadilika mahali hapa na katika maisha yako to the glory of his name. Leo nataka ni nene neno chini ya kichwa ama kichwa yake ni the joy of the redeemed. Furaha ya waliokombolewa. Isaiah 35 verse 1 to 10. Furaha ya waliokombolewa. The joy of the redeemed. Praise the Lord. Jina redeem inamaanisha kulipa gharama so that you can buy back you pay a price and take back that which was yours kutoka mwanzo mwanadamu amekuwa ni mali ya Mungu na hata kama watu watakubali ama watakataa mwanadamu ni mali ya Mungu bwana asifiwe sana na Mungu anaifanya kazi na kupitia Kristo wakati Kristo alikuja na akafa as we read in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 Inasema he delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his son in whom we have redemption even the forgiveness of sin kazi kubwa ambayo ilifanya Kristo aje ni kuwaokoa na kuwakomboa watu ambao walikuwa ni mateka wa giza bwana asifiwe sana na ndio nasema ndani ya Kristo tumepata ukombozi na msamaha wa dhambi. Ni gharama tulilipiwa wapendwa. Ni kazi iligarimu moyo, iligarimu mtu afe ili mwanadamu apatikane na awe tena amerejeshwa katika makusudi ya Bwana. Na leo nataka kuongea kuhusu hao waliokombolewa, furaha ya waliokombolewa. Isaiah chapter number 20, uh, 35 verse 1 to verse 10 and the bible says the desert and the parched land will be glad the wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus verse 2 it will burst into bloom it will rejoice greatly and shout for joy the glory of lebanon will be given to it the splendor of carmel and sharon they will see the glory of the lord the splendor of our god but he strengthen the feeble hand stint the knees that give way say to those with fearful hearts be strong do not fear your god will come he will come with vengeance with a divine retribution oh praise the lord meruka haraka bwana asifiwe sana get back to verse 4 He will say to those with fear for hearts be strong do not fear your god will come he will come with vengeance with a divine retribution he will come to save you then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf be you know unstopped then will the lip with the lame reap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Verse 7. The burning sand will become a pool. 
the dusty ground, bumbling springs. In the hounds where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and paperless will grow. And a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for, for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. In verse number nine, no lion will be there, nor will any ferocious beast get upon, get upon it. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there. And finally, verse 10. And the lamb sound of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their hands. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Hallelujah. Katika maandiko haya, the book of um, Isaiah, chapter number 34, okisoma 34, Bibiria inazungumzia about the judgment of nations. Na mungu wanaongea vile atawahukumu mataifa. Na anaitaja mataifa katha hapo. Lakini katikati ya maneno ya hukumu, buwana akaweka neno ambalo ni la upendo na la neema na la ushiri wa watu wake. Kwa sababu mungu ako pia na upande mwingine. Kusema ukweli na tumekua tukisema hivyo this week wale wameweza kuhudhuria zile ibada tumekua nazo kwa tika jumahiri. Ni kwamba mungu sio upande moja tu. God has many sides. Na hatuwezi mariza kumujua kikamulifu paka wakati ambapo tutamuona uso kwa uso. Tunasema yeye ndiye yule mungu wakati mwingine ako na gathambu. He is also called the consuming fire. Mungu wakuogopua. Biblia inazungumuza about the last days. Na Yohana anasema ni kaona kiti kilicho kuwa mbele zangu. Na alie kuwa amekikalia. Na anasema wakati bingu na dunia ziri muona alie kalia. Zika toroka zika toka mbele yake. Because God ni mungu pia wakuogopua. Wana sifu sana. Na chapter 34 inamuriviru mungu kama mungu aliejawa na gathambu. Mungu wambaye ameamua. I am going to punish the nations. I am going to deal with them. I am going to break their necks. I am going to, you know, to punish them. Lakini katikati ya hiyo, akaweka ujumbe hapo ndani. Kuhusu watu wambao yeye mwenyewe amewakomboa. Watu wambao wamekubali ya kwamba kama mungu yuko, tutatembea na kuenenda kwa jia zake. Na anasema katikati ya kazi hizo nafanyia mataifa. Kwa watu wangu, I am going to bring a joy. A joy that people will not understand. Praise the name of the living God. Maneno haya ni maneno ambayo It's part of those prophetic words That have multiple You know fulfillment Nikati ya maneno ya kinabi Ambayo inatimia Mara na mara na mara Kwanza lilikuwa ni neno Na zungumziwa wa Israeli Kwa sababu wakati huo Walikuwa wanaelekewa na nguvu Za waseria Na waseria wakawa wameharibu Israeli wameimaliza Sio inchi tena na bwa Na ni kama ananena Nitabakisha mabaki yangu Na nitawarejesha Praise the name of Jesus Wasomi wa Bibiria pia wanasema Kurejeshwa kwa Israeli As a nation In 1948 Wakati Israeli likuwa imeisha Hakukuwa na inchi inaitu wa Israeli Haikuwa katikati Ama haikuwa taifa inalo julikana Ata na umoja wa mataifa Wasomi wa historia Na maandiko anatuambia Hiyo urejesho of Israel As a nation Pia ilikuwa ni sehemu ya urejesho Ama kufanikiwa kwa unabii huu maana anasema wakati ule wale watu wasio na miguu waambiwa wapate nguvu maana ninawarejesha haleluya 
You know God is a covenant keeping keeping God. Na tuko na uhakika ya kwamba because the other part of this prophetic word ni kwamba itatimia wakati Kristo atakaporudi. When Jesus shall return, alichukue kanisa lake na aende nalo miaka saba kule angani. Baada ya miaka saba Biblia inasema ya kwamba atashuka according to the word of Zechariah, atashuka juu ya mlima unaoitwa the Mount Olive ama Mount Moriah na pale ata establish ufalme wake tena na pia hili neno linazungumzia kuhusu yale na kanisa la Bwana we can also take this word as a word that has an implication in our lives because we are the redeemed of the Lord amen katikati ya watu wengi ambao wako dunia hii na ambao wanaisikia ujumbe na ijiri ya Kristo na kuidharau katikati ya watu wengi ambao hawaoni kama Mungu ni kitu katikati ya watu wengi ambao wamesikia kuhusu Kristo na wengine wanaendelea kusema tu ni kijana mwingine wa Maria wengine wanaendelea kusema ni mzee mwingine ni nabii mwingine aliishi na akafa kwa wale Biblia inasema kitabu cha Yohana moja mbili ya kwamba wote waliomwamini wote waliyemkubali na kuliamini jina lake akawapa uweza wa kuitwa wana wa Mungu wote ambao walisikia injili na wakaikubali they join the class of the redeemed of the Lord na wapendwa let me say iko furaha imewekwa kwa ajili ya watu ambao Bwana amejinunulia katika jina la Yesu Maandiko inatuambia wa Efeso 4 na mustari wake ni wanane ya kwamba hivi divyo inavyosema wakati alipa when he ascended Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8 ya kwamba when he ascended on high he led captives in his train and he gave gifts unto men hiyo maana yake ni kwamba wakati Kristo alikufa na akazikwa alipokuwa anafufuka Biblia inasema aliwabeba mateka akatoka na wao akawafungulia na ninaamini ni wewe na mimi alitupangia ya kwamba tutaiona furaha ya binguni lakini hata kabla tuione amevunja minyororo Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says katika kitabu cha Wakorosai mbili mstari wa 14 ya kwamba having disarmed all powers and authorities yani akiwa amenyang'anya mamlaka kila nguvu na mamlaka Bwana ainuliwe sana. Oh praise the name of Jesus. He made a public spectacle triumphing over them by the cross. Wapendwa yako mambo yaliyo tusonga yako mambo yaliyo tubeba yako mambo yaliyozuia tuone furaha ya wokovu but when jesus came when jesus died ilikani kama ni kushindwa but may i declare hiyo ndio ilikuwa ushindi wetu nguvu za giza zikaachwa zikakosa nguvu juu ya maisha yetu laana ya dhambi ikakosa uweza juu ya maisha yetu nasema wapendwa tuna deni ya adui kama kuna kitu anaitisha akunywe damu ya Yesu kama kuna kitu adui anadai kwa maisha yetu we have been redeemed bei imeripoa in full in the mighty name of Jesus mambo yaliyosema hatuwezi tukaona uso wa Bwana yalishughulikiwa pale msalabani Calvary alipoagikwa na akasema yote imekwisha Biblia inasema kukawa na giza for three hours na hekaru ikakatika mara mbili kizuizi kilichozuilia watu kuona uwepo wa Bwana kikaondolewa we have been redeemed in the mighty name of Jesus i am no longer a slave of fear i am no longer a slave of wickedness i am no longer a slave of sin i am no longer a slave of the powers of darkness christ has paid my 
prize in full. He canceled the record that was written against me. He nailed it on the cross. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus. Kwa sababu kila sheria haingefanya. Yesu amefanya. Ametimiza sheria na mtu wasema nimekombolewa. Nimekombolewa. Gharama imeripwa mpendwa katika jina la Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Na kazi ya kuridim ni kazi ambayo inafanywa na mtu ambaye anakuelewa na mtu ambaye ni dugu wa karibu. Katika Israeli kuna kitu kilikuwa kinaitwa Kinsman Redeemer. Huyo mtu kazi yake ilikuwa ingawa kuna mtu wa jamii yao amefilisika na amekuwa maskini na hajiwezi na mashamba yake ni kama inabebwa kabla haijauziwa mtu mwingine kila tunaitaga kama auction kabla hiyo auction haijapeanwa ifunguliwa watu wa nje ilikuwa inafunguliwa watu wa karibu wa jamii kuna ulizanwa kama kuna mtu anaweza akanunua mali ya huyu duu na akipatikana mtu wa jamii anapewa the first priority anapewa anunue hiyo hiyo shamba na asaidie watu wao anaweza warejeshea ama anaweza kaa nayo ikiwa yake na tunaona mfano wa Boaz Biblia inatuambia wakati eli Melek alienda na watoto wake na mkewe kule akaondoka nchi akaenda nchi ya Wamoabi wakafa kule Naomi akarudi akiwa na msichana mmoja ambaye alikuwa ni mjana mwingine wa kijana yake akawaya kwamba ni mtu maskini mtu asiyejiweza lakini Boaz mtu aliyekuwa wa jamii ya Elimelek akaja as a kingsman redeemer akalipa gharama akakubaliwa ma ali ya dugu yake Elimelek paka na mke wa kijana yake aliyeitwa Ruth ya kwamba anaweza akawachukua wawe watu wake wapendwa nisikieni Yesu Kristo Biblia inasema kitabu cha Waibrania bili mstari wa 14 ya kwamba kwa sababu wana walikuwa na mwili na damu haleluya because the children had fresh and blood he took of their nature alichukua mfano wetu since the children are fresh and blood he to shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death that is the devil yesu alichukua mfano wetu ili aweze kutukomboa kama mtu wa karibu nasi angekuja akiwa mungu haleluya angekuja akiwa kama malaika angekuja na uweza wake lakini alihitajika ili aweze kutuokoa aje kwa mfano wetu kama mtu wa karibu nasi akachukua mwili ndio tunaitanga incarnation akaenda msarabani na hii yote biblia inasema that he may destroy him that holds the power of death that is the devil yeye aliyetushika kwa nguvu za mauti amu haribu huyo ili sisi tukombolewe verse 15 inasema so that he may free praise the name of Jesus all those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death sio tu kumharibu shetani lakini pia ili awafungulie wote waliokamatwa katika utumwa wa kuogopa mauti wapendwa kristo hakuja tu ndio asurubiwa tu samangi alikuja alikuja kulipa gharama nasema alikuja kulipa gharama alikuja kulipa gharama katika jina la Yesu kama kuna kitu kinaitisha deni hicho kiambiwe gharama imelipwa in full haleluya praise the name of jesus haleluya we are the restore we are the redeemed of the lord nae isaiah ananena mambo kadhaa ambayo nitaizungumza the elements of this joy yani mambo yaliyo katika furaha hii ya waliokombolewa kwa sababu kama mtu wako ndani ya Kristo huyo mtu maandiko inasema ni kiumbe kipya ya kale yamepita nayo mapya yamekuja haleluya 
kama mtu wako ndani ya Kristo na kuwa ndani ya Kristo sio kwenda kanisa kuwa ndani ya Kristo sio kubatizwa kuwa damu ya ndani ya Kristo sio kwa sababu unakuranga meza ya Bwana haleluya ni mtu aliyemfahamu Mungu mtu ambaye ako na the inner witness of the spirit Biblia inasema and the spirit is a witness with our spirit that we are the children of God haleluya haleluya kama mtu wako ndani ya Kristo basi yako na nafasi ya kuenjoy these elements of the joy of the redeemed number one, restoration hii ni kitu imeahidiwa waliokombolewa restoration yani urejesho tusome tena mustari ule wa kwanza na wa pili wa Isaiah 35 the bible says the desert and the parched land will be glad <coughs> the wilderness will rejoice and blossom like the crocus verse 2 it will burst into bloom it will rejoice greatly and shout for joy the glory of lebanon will be given to it the splendor of carmel and sharon they will see the glory of the lord the splendor of our god mungu anaahidi urejesho anasema ya kwamba kule nyikani na katika nchi ambayo hakuna maji in a parched land yani nchi ambayo ni kavu kutasikika furaha na anasema watafurahia wakati nyika yao itakuwa inatoa maua ni kumaanisha katika desert kuna wakati ambapo ni Mungu anazungumza kuna wakati itafika a place that was rocky and desert and it passed a place that had no power you know or, or no environment for habitation mara tena kutatokea maua haleluya wacha nikupatia a very practical example today as we speak wale watu ambao wanajua Israeli vile kulivyo hata ukiangalia kwa map zako ni mahali ambapo ni pakavu pakionekana ni mahali ambapo pamejaa mawe ni mahali ambapo inchi nyingi most of the land looks like a desert lakini hata igawa hivyo Israeli wanadharisha chakula cha kutosha wanauzia mataifa ingine kama Kenya Hallelujah Praise the name of Jesus Praise the name of the Lord Teknolojia ile kubwa ya ukulima dunia mzima inaendewa Israeli hata magavana nasikiaga wanaendaga benchmarking ya agriculture huko hamjasikia magavana wetu wakienda huko inchi yani Mungu alikuwa anaahidi that I'm going to restore a dry land mimi nitaibadilisha nitaifanya mahali watu watafurahia na wapendwa wachani niwaambie kama Mungu ataleta ataleta urejesho kwa maisha ya mtu hata kama ni ugumu wa aina gani hata kama ni ukavu wa aina gani haleluya hata kama ni mambo gani inafuatana na maisha ya mwanadamu kama huyo he does not need a history of productivity if the lord decides that he is going to work a restoration in the life of a man even the dry lands shall become habitable even the unproductive lives the unproductive part of your spirit and of your life mungu wako na uweza wa kuibadilisha airejeshe iwe mahali ambapo chakula na mali inaweza ikapatikana tena haleluya the book of romans chapter 8 verse 18 neno hili this word inazungum is also a prophetic word by the way hili neno ni neno la kinabi verse 18 to 22 ambayo inazungumzia when christ shall return but this is what paul says i consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us somebody say amen yani majaribu ambayo tunaipitia anasema haitoshi kutufanya tukose kuenenda na safari ikilinganishwa na utukufu ambao bado hatujaona verse 19 anaanza kuongea kuhusu creation the creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of god to be revealed yani the vegetation around us for the creation was subjected to frustration not by its own choice but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope in wakati mungu alikuwa analaani adam na hawa badala ya kuwalaani alilaani dunia 
akasema kutatokea miimba bwana asifiwe sana so the vegetation ndio ilaaniwa that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of god verse 21 we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time hiki ambacho paulo anazungumzia anaongea kuhusu the vegetation anatupatia mfano wa mambo ya kawaida anasema the creation you know awaits the revelation of the sons of god wakati kristo watakuja na wana wa mungu wafunuliwe na anasema the whole creation imekuwa subjected under oppression na imekuwa ikiria but there is one guarantee when the sons of god shall be revealed even the creation will be healed hallelujah bwana inuliwe sana so Paul anatupeleka kule mbali anapozungumzia kuhusu urejesho anatuambia mambo itakayofanyika wakati Kristo atakaporejea ili atuonyeshe ya kwamba mambo tunayopitia saa hii ni madogo sana yakilinganishwa na yale ambayo Bwana ametuwekea shida ambazo unapitia ugumu ambao unaona leo ni kidogo sana ukiliganishwa na kile kitakachotokea when Christ shall be revealed wapendwa i came to remind us ya kwamba urejesho wa utukufu ni furaha na ni ahadi ya waliokombolewa na ni sasa na hata wakati Kristo atakaporudi Siku moja Petro akamuuliza Yesu na sisi tulioacha watu wetu tukaacha mali yetu tukaacha wake wetu tukaacha kingine chochote ili tukufuate akamuuliza tutalipwa na nini akaambiwa hapa duniani chochote uliacha kwa ajili ya ufalme utakipata mara moja na baadaye utajaziwa na uzima wa milele haleluya haleluya Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Ni Bwana anaahidi. Can we get Joel chapter 2, verse number 25? Yoeli 2, mstari wa 25. Maandiko haya ambayo ni ya muhimu sana. We are talking about restoration. Urejesho. Mambo ambayo ilikuwa ni ya watu wa Mungu, lakini adui akayaiba. Mambo ambayo ilikuwa ni yetu. Oh, may the Lord have mercy. Praise the Lord. And we get it in the New King James Version. Yani mambo ambayo Bwana aliahidi watu wake. Wakati Bwana alimuda alimuumba Adam na Hawa, kuna vitu alimpatia. Akamwambia chukua dunia hii, uiongoze na uitawale. Lakini adui akaiba utawala wa mwanadamu kwa sababu ya mwanadamu kutenda dhambi. Lakini tunaporejea, yeye anaahidi kuwarejesha watu wake. Hawa watu walikuwa wameasi maagano ya Mungu. Na Bwana akasema tangaza mfungo watu wafunga watavuta uso wangu ni Yoeli anaongea na wakati waliomba Bwana aliwajibu kwa maneno mengi kati yake ni haya ninasoma can we read together akasema so i will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten the crawling locusts the consuming locusts and the chewing locusts my great army which i sent amongst you praise the lord Bwana hata hajaongea kuhusu kurejesha mali mpaka miaka. Hey, sema mpaka miaka. Bwana asifiwe sana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kuna neema ambayo Mungu hupeanga watu wake. If only we would choose I'm sorry to follow Christ. Wakati mwingine tunaangalianga mambo na tunaona ni kama tunapoteza sana, ni kama inakani uchinga kufuatana na Yesu. Let me tell you, jiachilie kwake. Hakuna kitu umepoteza kwa ajili ya ufalme ambacho hautapata. Wengine wanakaa ni kama wameenda mbele. Mulikuwa shule na wao, wao wamefanya deals za corruption na wanakaa ni kama wametajirika wakakuacha. Wacha ni kuambia hakuna mahali wameenda. Bwana dia anaahidi, I will restore unto you even the years. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Paka miaka 
mtu alionekana ni kama ako nyuma na ako mbali bwana ndiye anasema i myself i will restore can we get second kings chapter number 8 biblia inazungumza kuhusu the shunamite woman na maandiko inatuambia huyu mama kukawa na kiangazi naye Elisha akamwambia kutakuwa na kiangazi ondoka na uende nchi ya mbali praise the name of Jesus na wakati wa kukawa Gehazi ama mfalme ameita Gehazi amuelezee kuhusu Elisha baada ya hiyo miaka saba na wakati walikuwa wanaongea i'm still waiting for second kings chapter 8 katika jina la Kristo Ah praise the Lord. Second Kings chapter 8. Hiyo nimeota nimeeleza ni verse 1 and 2 and 3. So you can go to verse 4. So Gehazi akawa anaeleza mfalme. Then the king talked with Gehazi the servant of the man of God saying, "Tell me please all the great things Elisha has done." Verse 5. The Bible says, "Now it happened as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life that there was the woman that there was the woman whose son had been restored to life appealing to the king for her house and for her lord and gehazi said my lord o king this is the woman and this is her son whom elisha restored to life verse 6 sababu mungu anaweza kurejeshea mpaka miaka bwana asifiwe sana But the Bible says and when the king asked the woman she told him so the king appointed a certain officer for her saying restore all that was hers can we read that part ebu tusome sisi wote restore all that was her and all the proceeds of the fields from the day that she left the lad until ha ah, praise the lord na sio ni kurejeshewa miaka Miaka saba mama amekuwa nje ametoroka kiangazi amekaa mbali na, na shamba lake hata hajui ni nani wanalima wakati amerudi akafikiria wacha niende nione mfalme ukisoma utajua huyu mama alikuwa ni mama mkubwa mama mwenye usemi alikuwa na ufahamu wa mfalme sababu wakati Elisha aliuliza Gehazi tumfanyie nini wakamuita wakamuuliza unataka tuogee na mfalme mama akamwambia mimi hadhi yangu ni ya juu naweza mfikia mfalme so akaamua wacha nirudi kule nimwambie miaka saba nili cha shamba langu na sasa nataka nirejeshewe Mungu akawa amepanga wakati anaingia naye mfalme anauliza kuhusu Gehazi and the only example iliyokuwa imepeanwa ni ya huyo mama wakati mfalme alisikia hiyo maneno akasema huyu mama arejeshewe shamba lake haleluya na muongeze kitu kingine every prophet ambaye imepatikana kwa shamba lake kutoka wakati alitoka mpaka sasa arejeshewe kuna urejesho wapendwa unaopewa the redeemed of god watu ambao maisha yao wamemtegemea Mungu wa miungu wamemtegemea Bwana wa mabwana hata kama wanakani kama wamepoteza let the devil here we are recovering everything that is written in our name in the mighty name of Jesus we are not living even an inch kama kuna kitu kimeandikwa kwa jina la watu wa Mungu wapendwa na waambia kwa kweli anasema i will restore even the years that were eaten in Jesus name may the lord bring a restoration upon the church of Christ where we are by unajisikia kuna mambo nimepoteza nimepoteza furaha ya wokovu nimepoteza mwelekeo wa maisha nimepoteza mali katikati ya barabara hata nimepoteza kazi kwa sababu nimesema nitasimama na Mungu wa miungu wapendwa leo natangaza may the lord cause a restoration in the mighty name of Jesus i decree again may the lord cause a restoration in Jesus mighty name Ezekiel 37 verse 12 kitabu cha Ezekiel 37 najua ikitajwa tu unajua inazungumza kuhusu the valley of the dry bone 
na maandiko inatuambia hivi ya kwamba Ezekiel akaongozwa akapelekwa mahali ambapo palikuwa na mifupa mikavu yes nataka hiyo na wakati ambapo aliiona akaulizwa je mifupa hii inaweza ikaishi tena akasema wewe pekee unajua bwana lakini bwana akamwambia prophesy unto the bones akaitabiria kukasikika kelele kelele kubwa mifupa ikitafutana na maandiko inasema ikarejea na kukawa na mishipa na nyama lakini yakukuwa na uhai akamwambia tabiria hata ile the weed itoke kutoka pande zote na hii mimi mifupa ikawekwa mpaka pumzi ikasimama ikawa a mighty army ndio bwana akazungumza na Ezekiel akamwambia hivi there for prophesy and say to them this is the children of Israel now wakati huu walikuwa huko Babylon wametawanyika wamesahau kama watawai rudi kwao akasema prophesy to them that says the lord god behold oh my people i will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel verse 13 Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves O oh my people and brought you up from your graves hallelujah hallelujah verse 14 Then I will put my spirit in you and you shall live and I'll press in your in you sorry I'll press you in your own land then you shall know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it says the lord imagine watu wako katika utumwa this time wamekaa miaka mingi maybe they had stayed there for about 50 years hiyo inamaanisha hata wale walikuwa wametekwa nyara wengine walikuwa wamekufa wale wako hai ni kusikia wanasikia kulikuwa na shamba ilikuwa yetu huko kunaitwa israeli wako babylon na israel and jerusalem has been subdued and destroyed lakini Bwana anawaambia mnakaa kama watu waliokufa na wakaziko. Lakini hivi ndivyo Bwana anasema, nitafungua makaburi yenu. Haleluya. Yaani ile tumaini ilikufa ndivyo Bwana anasema, nitaifufua tena, nitafungua makaburi yenu na nitawatoa kutoka kwa makaburi na nikifanya hivyo itajulikana ya kwamba mimi ni Mungu. Anaongeza na nitatia roho wangu juu yenu na nitawapanda katika shamba lililokuwa lenu. Haya ni ado marelo imegode ya ukawe. Wanaahidiwa mashamba ambayo ilikuwa ni ya babu zao, lakini Bwana anasema wakati nitawarejesha mtajua mimi ndiye Mungu na si Mungu wakumbuka mtu siku ya leo na amurejeshe nasema Mungu wakumbuka mtu siku ya leo na amurejeshe physical restoration to the glory of God mambo ambayo inakani kama haiwezekani unashindwa inawezekana na nilidanganywa nikaibiwa shamba ya kawaida nasema inawezekana we send for the power of God to act on your behalf mtu ambaye nauliza inawezekana kanisa lirejeshewe hadhi yake na utukufu wake ambao ilikuwa inatembea nayo mimi nasema inawezekana and i prophesy as a man of god may the lord cause a restoration in the lives of the redeemed may the redeemed of the lord rejoice when they enter into the land that is theirs akawaambia wa israeli mpaka wakaiba huu wimbo ya kwamba wakati yarejesha utumwa wetu tulikaa watu waliota lakini mataifa ilipoangalia ikasema Bwana ametendea ware may you be that person about watu watasema Bwana amemkumbuka Bwana amemtendea mtu watasema na nema nekore gai kama ni huyu ameinuka tena there is a god in heaven i pray that jehovah will manifest his power in your life and through your spirit paka watu waseme there is a god who restores and somebody say amen the next promise of the redeemed is strength for the weak nguvu ya wadhaifu nguvu ya wadhaifu verse 3 and 4 the bible says 
<coughs> Tuko tu hiyo Isaiah chapter 35 verse 3 and 4 nasema strengthen the feeble hands steady the knees that give way say to those with the fearful hearts be strong do not fear your god will come he will come with vengeance with divine retribution he will come to save you hallelujah siku hii wiki hii tumesafiri mahali mara mbili tuzidi kuna mahali tulienda meru tukateremuka milima bwana asifiwe sana tukateremuka milima tukifikiria tumemaliza wednesday tukapelekwa kuingine na brother jojo tukateremuka ingine nikasikia richard akisema nasikia ni kama ni kama huku bolt zimengoka yani miguu inatembea ikitetemeka bwana inoliwe sana praise the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah na haikuwa rahisi wengine mpaka sasa nasikia wakilia wakisema miguu 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 now you have an experience of what weak knees look like hiyo dio inamaanisha wakati magoti haina nguvu inatembea ni kama mtu ameshikwa na ile ngojo ile kwa inaitwa aje ile ya kutembea namna hii acha nisiitaje bwana asifiwe sana bwana ainuliwe sana bwana asifiwe unajaribu kutafuta balance ya miguu haipatikani kwa sababu ya the, the weakness of the knees anasema sasa sikizeni verse number 3 anasema strengthen the feeble hands and steady the knees that give way and verse number 4 be said to those with fearful hearts kwa sababu wakati anazungumza kuhusu mikono na miguu isiyo na nguvu hazungumzi hii ya kawaida anaongea kuhusu roho za wanadamu na wapendwa kuna wakati inafikanga mtu anajisikia hana nguvu ya kuendelea unakutwa na mambo mpaka unashindwa nitatokea kweli bwana asifiwe sana kuna siku inaitangwa a day of adversity katika maisha ya kawaida na hii ukujia wanadamu wa aina yote kuna wakati unapata moyo wako hauna nguvu tena ni wewe umekuwa ukitia watu nguvu lakini unajisikia right now i need somebody to encourage me praise the lord na tunasoma even about Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane Biblia inasema alikuwa analia anaomba paka anamwaga machozi ya damu until an angel was sent to come and minister to him tunasoma kuhusu watu kama Elijah in the book of first king chapter 19 anasukumwa na Jezebel paka anapotea analala mahali anasema sasa Mungu ni uwe nimekufa moyo haleluya Praise the Lord. Lakini anasema zungumzia ambao mioyo yao haina nguvu. Hallelujah. Zungumzia ambao mioyo yao haina nguvu na waambie be strong do not fear. Somebody say amen. Be strong do not fear. Pendo wacha nikuambie hata kama unapita katikati ya moto ahadi ya Bwana ni kwamba hata utakapopita katikati ya moto moto ule hautakuchoma hata wakati utapita katikati ya mafuriko anasema usiogope mafuriko yale haitakubeba ndiye anazungumza siku ya leo to the people who are feeling weakness in them mambo imekutendekea mpaka unajiuliza kwani Mungu ulinisahau unaomba mpaka maombi ya kelele wacha kuomba kelele tena bwana ametumana leo anasema wanaogopa na waambiwe msiogope tena wanaogopa na waambiwe Mungu wenu anakuja wanaogopa na waambiwe anakuja kuwapigania wanaogopa na waambiwe yeye anakuja amebeba ghadhabu ili ya kuokoe oh may god arise on behalf of somebody mambo iliyo kusonga mambo iliyo kufinyilia wacha kufa moyo find your strength in the living god siku moja paul akaimba ama akalia akiomba ya kwamba mungu amuondolee mwimba uliyokuwa unamsumbua lakini biblia inasema bwana akamjibu in the book of second corinthians chapter number 12 akamwambia hivi 
see do not be afraid for my grace is sufficient for you and my power is made manifest in your weakness may I speak to somebody wakati uko chini huo ndio wakati mzuri sana wa kushinda kwa sababu wakati umewezwa kutoka hapo it is no longer about you but about Jehovah wakati unajiizi I am done siwezi jinyosha tena sina nguvu nyingine Jehovah takes over and when God takes over oh Paul anasema if God be for us who can be against us Bwana akiongoza jeshi Bwana akienda mbele yako Bwana akikubeba nani atakupinga naombea watu wanao udhaifu na waombea watu waliodhoofika kwa imani umesongwa na majaribu paka unashindwa kama utavika binguni may the lord revive you may the lord revive you may the lord revive you in the mighty name of jesus haijalishi jeshi lililokuzunguka wewe simama mahali pako kitabu cha second chronicles chapter number 20 maandiko inatuambia wakati jehoshaphat alizungukwa na wanajeshi aina nyingi akashindwa afanye nini akaita watu waombe roho mtakatifu akashuka juu ya mzee mmoja hapo aliitwa jehalel akamwambia zungumzia jehoshaphat na watu wote wa juda uwaambie hivi you do not need to be afraid because the battle does not belong to you the battle belongs to Jehovah oh makayanda let the devil here hatuishi hapa hata kama tunakaa dhaifu tuko na Mungu jina lake ni jemedari wa vita tuko na Mungu jina lake ni Mungu mshindi he has never lost a battle may god arise on behalf of the weak may god arise on behalf of the bound and may god arise on behalf of the down trodden and give them victory praise the lord na hii ni urithi ya waliokombolewa mwadhani da kono kiria gotonorithie bwana hakukuokoa akuaibishe bendoa kuna nguvu kuna nguvu Paul akawaambia watu wa Efeso Efeso 6:10 ya kwamba be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might ya kwamba kuweni tu na nguvu katika Bwana mtu akisema nitakuinukia mtu akisema tutaleta mizimu mtu akisema tutaleta uganga wacha kuangalia wewe hauna kitu sema niko na Mungu sema niko na Mungu sema niko na Mungu and me plus God we are the majority nasema mimi na Mungu sisi ndio washindi ndio maana imeandikwa Zaburi 20 na mstari wa saba ya kwamba wanategemea magari ya farasi na vita zao lakini sisi tutaritaja jina la Jehova ikaandikwa Zaburi 18 na mstari wa 29 ya kwamba kwa msaada wa Bwana ninaweza nikaruka kila ukuta nimewekea kwa msaada wa Bwana naweza nikapigana na maadui na nikaruka haleluya somebody say with god i can make it kwa wale hawana nguvu Bwana anaachilia uweza wacha kuva moyo mpendwa simama kwa imani wacha kununika simama kwa imani kuko Mungu mbinguni anayesikia maombi na anajibu wenye haki hata kama wanakaa vivu na wadho yodhofika yuko Mungu mbinguni wakati Yusufu alikuwa anakufa akanenea watu wa jamii yao akawaambia I'm about to die but I know one thing Mungu wetu atakuja kuangalia na akija msiache mivupa yangu hapa wapendwa hata kama Godfather amekufa strengthen your hands there is a God in heaven put your faith in him anasema Daudi akaimba wimbo huu ya kwamba nilimgoja Bwana naye akanisikia akanitoa kwa shimo la utelezi na mahali pa upotovu akanipanda juu ya mwamba akatia wimbo mpya katika kinywa changu may that be your portion strength upon the people of God may that be your portion revival of your strength in the mighty name of Jesus 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hata wakati unajisikia huna nguvu ya kuabudu, mpendo aabudu. Fanya kama Petro, kama Paul na Silas. Wamefungwa miguu na mikono, lakini bado wako na nguvu. Masaya saa sita ya usiku. Wakati giza ni giza totoro. Hallelujah. Wakati giza ni kubwa. Yaani wakati unajisikia there is no hope. Usikubali kufa moyo. Wewe inuka na wimbo ukisema, I know my redeemer is alive. I know my God will appear. Hata kama umefungwa macho na huoni kwa macho macho ya mwili wacha macho ya kiroho ifunguke useme ninaona mbali naona mkono wa Mungu ukishuka kunipigania katika jina la Yesu take your position you do not need to fight the battle because the battle belongs unto the Lord may the redeemed say hallelujah waliokombolewa waseme hallelujah jambo la tatu waliwaahidi ni uponyaji hili he promised them healing. Verse number 5 and 6. Aliwaahidi kuwaponya hawa watu. Sio tu kuwarejesha na sio tu nguvu. He promised to heal them. Verse 5 says, Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the rim leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Oh, praise the Lord. Unajua ya kwamba uponyaji ni chakura cha watoto wa mungu. Siku moja mama akaja kwa Yesu. Naitua mama mungiriki. Akamuambia Yesu. Ponya mtoto wangu ni mugonjo. Yesu akamuambia suwezi chukua chakura cha watoto ni patie mbo. Amen. Wale watu ambao wanachukia injiri wanasemanga Yesu alitukana mtu. Hakutukana mtu. Jesus was speaking many times in parables and in symbols. Na ni kama alikuwa anasema siwezi chukua chakula ambacho ni cha watoto. Ile chakula nimepika tu yenyewe ya watoto. Alafu badala ya kupea watoto ni yani nikafeed my dog with it. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Mama huyo kwa imani akamwambia hata mbwa anakuraga kwa meza ya mkubwa zile vitu zinaangukanga. Hiyo mama alikuwa na hekima. Yesu akasema sijaona hekima na imani kama hii Israeli. Hallelujah. Healing is the portion of believers. Anasema the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Kama kuna mambo Bwana ameahidi watu wake kati yake ni uponyaji. Can we read first Peter chapter 2 verse 24? Ili niweza kushikanisha yote pamoja. <coughs> First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. The Bible says this. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. So that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds. Hallelujah. Can we read that part? By his wounds. <laughs> Tafadhali usiruke. Tunataka 24 peke yake. Haya, kwani hata umeenda kabisa. Now, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sin might live for righteousness. Hebu fikisha mpaka hapo. First of all, angalia uone hii ahadi mpaka hapo inapewa watu ambao Kristo alibeba dhambi zao akazipeleka msarabani. Bwana asifiwe sana. Na kupitia kwa kifo chake Sisi pia tukafa kwa mambo ya dhambi Ili tuishi kwa utakatifu So na diyo maana nasema By whose stripes You were Hata azemi you will be healed Walimu wa kingereza buwana sifuwe Hata weni na juo ulisoma kingereza kidogo Hiyo inasema utaponywa ama uliponywa <coughs> Praise the Lord The moment we came to Christ he guaranteed our healing. Now, as I speak, I speak it nikijua. We are faced with the danger of diseases all over. Yes, I know, even now, what to anaka kwa uwaga wa COVID-19. 
hata mambo ya HIV naongewa kila siku kwa TV mambo ya kansa mambo ya malaria i know praise the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah lakini kila Yesu aliahidi ni kwamba wote ambao wamekufa kwa mambo ya dhambi ili waishi kwa utakatifu kwa sababu Kristo alibeba dhambi zao anasema kuchapwa alikochapwa nikakukutuletea uponyaji haleluya this is a promise to the children of god hii ni ahadi ya wana wa Mungu and you know kupokea ahadi za Mungu inahitaji kitu just an attitude of faith you don't need a lot of things just an attitude of faith imani ya kwamba hiyo ahadi ni yangu ninaikubali ninaipokea kwa maisha yangu bwana asifiwe sana uponyaji ni ahadi ya watoto wa Mungu na ndio maana unasikia anaahidi kuponya in fact this one nasema anaahidi kuponya mpaka wilderness itoke mpaka maji anaponya wanadamu anaponya mpaka wilderness there's a book i was reading by myas monlo inaitwa the holy spirit the governor of the kingdom na anasema miracles are not supposed to be miracles to the church they are supposed to be a lifestyle Bwana asifiwe sana. Dunia ndio inafaa kustuka ya kwamba mambo kama hayo imetendeka kwa sababu miujiza ndio lifestyle ya ufalme. Wakati Roho Mtakatifu amepewa nafasi atawale kanisa la Bwana. Si unaona mtu kama Petro hata hakuhitaji kuombea watu. Biblia inasema akitembea tu hivi watu wanaweka watu mahali kivuli chake kinaanguka ili wapone. Hiyo ni lifestyle. Yeye yako kwa biashara zake labda hata hajui kuna na watu wanapona miracles are supposed to be what we live with or we live by it's supposed to be a normal experience in the kingdom and i ask that god is going to bring a restoration of miracles in the church praise the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah na kwa hivyo wewe ambaye moyoni mwako ama mwilini mwako kuna magonjwa you can believe god today that he is going to heal all your sicknesses Isaiah 53 verse 4 Biblia inasema he carried our infirmities praise the name of Jesus yani yeye alibeba magonjwa yetu yote the bible says surely he bore our griefs and he carried our sorrows yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by god and afflicted verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes hallelujah somebody read that by his stripes he does not say we shall be healed by his stripes sasa ukikata ile ya petro ya kwamba alituponya unakubali hii ya wakati huu ya kwamba anatuponya ama tumepona sasa. Hallelujah. Can somebody take the healing of God upon their lives? Tunanenea kila magonjwa ambayo inakalia watu wa Mungu kuwazuilia kuishi, kuwazuilia kufanya kazi, hata kama ni mifupa imevunjika, hata kama ni ngozi imeoza. Tunazungumza uponyaji wa Bwana katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Maandiko inasema wakati Kristo aliwaita the 72, akawatuma waende wakahubiri injili. He gave them authority to heal every form of disease. We declare healing now. Healing in the name of Jesus. Wapendwa tumeahidiwa uponyaji. Kabla hatujafika biguni sababu biguni hakuna magonjwa. Hatukiahidiwa uponyaji kama ni mbinguni, biguni hakuna magonjwa inafika hapa duniani. In case you get sick, you can trust in the name of the Lord. He is the great physician. He heals every disease and may he visit you wakati wa magonjwa. Na wale ambao ni wagonjwa leo, natangaza kwa jina la Yesu, the power of God that healed every disease to flow upon your life katika jina la Yesu Kristo magonjwa kwa majina yake yote tunaitangazia ikose uweza juu ya maisha ya wanadamu waliokombolewa maana biblia inasema i will open the eyes of the blind and i'm going to unstop the ears of those who do not hear even the lame are going to walk may that be 
your portion today in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four. Ninakibia kwa sababu ni nyingi na nataka kumaliza. Number four. Abadance. Hii ni ahadi ya walio teruliwa. Abadance. Abadance verse seven. Anahidi wingi eh, wa utajiri. Abadance verse seven. The Bible says the burning sand will become a pool. The thirsty ground bubbling springs in the hounds where jackals once lay. Grass and reed and paperless will grow. Amen. The burning sand. Notice this. He does not say ya kwamba there shall be a fountain in the burning sand. Unajua burning sand ni desert. Hasemi kutakuwa na kisima anasema itakuwa ni a pool of water. <laughs> Praise God. Unajua I was taught when you read the Bible first of all understand the English they are in before you bring the spiritual implication. Bwana <laughs> sifesani. Anasema the burning sand will become a pool. Yaani mahali pa ukavu kutafanyika ujazo wa maji. Ni kama zile dam ambazo watu ni watu wa nyandaro wanachibanga wana dam wakati kumenyesha dio ifungulie maji siende yote. Yaani anasema mahali kuna mchanga mgumu unachoma mpaka miguu. Hey, Bwana sifesani. Ajua wengi wenu labda mlikuwa kama mimi na kama hukuwa kama mimi Mungu akubariki sana. Sisi viatu tumevaa tukiwa wakubwa. So wakati kuna wakati kajua kalikuwa kanawaka, unatumwa shabani unasikia umekasirika. Kwa sababu utaenda ukirukaruka hivi. Watu wanafikiria ni bio unapenda. Sio bio ni kuchomwa na mchanga. Praise the name of Jesus. Miguu ya watu wengine ndio maana unaonaga hitorewangi socks kwa sababu ukiangalia chini iko na mapaches ya kuchomwa na mchanga na kaa black. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anasema huko kuna mchanga mkali na mna hiyo kutafanyika ni kama ni dam. Alafu anaongeza the dust ground bubbling springs. It does not say one spring. Mahali ambapo kumekauka kabisa nitachomoa visima vya maji. This is a talk on abundance. God is speaking about abundance for the people who love him. Praise the Lord. These are some of the things that we lost literally wakati Adam alikufa the, the land of Eden Eden ilikuwa ni mahali ambapo where was a, a lot of supply of water ukisoma vizuri Genesis chapter 2 you realize Eden ilikuwa imezungukwa na mito miine there was abundance of water in that garden wakati mwanadamu alifukuzwa from eden alipoteza that nourishment ya wingi wa neema ya bwana hallelujah lakini bwana anasema nitakapo wakomboa hao watu wangu mahali ambapo kuna mchanga uchomao nitajaza maji mahali ambapo nikapakavu nitajaza visima nitatomboa hapa na pale na pale na pale haleluya na si bwana atobolea watu visima katika jina la Yesu eh visima vya biashara hapa ingine pale kama uko na moja umetosheka na moja foturo there is an opportunity for more in the mighty name of Jesus haleluya Praise the name of the living God. Hebu soma kitabu cha Genesis 26 where andika utaenda kusoma. Maandiko inasema Yakoba kukawa na kiangazi na sio ile ilikuwa siku za Ibrahimu na Isaka akafikiria atahama aenda Misri ili aogope ama aondoke kiangazi. Bwana akamwambia usiogope na usiende Misri. Panda begu yako hapa. Musimu ni wa kiangazi. Mimi ndiye Mungu. The next thing that we read ni ya kwamba alipopanda the man became wealthy hallelujah he continued to grow in wealth until he was very wealthy inaongea kuhusu abundance and you know when Christ died upon the cross kuligana na first corinthians chapter number 8 and verse 9 biblia inasema you know the generous grace of our lord jesus christ yani mnajua neema iliyokalimiwa yesu kristo anayotupatia ya kwamba though he was rich yet for your sake 
he became poor so that by his poverty he could make you rich. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 9. Yakoba muna mujua ukarimu wa neema ulio ndani ya Kristo Yesu. That should be 2 Corinthians you can check. Maybe you can confirm. Ya kwamba anawambia muna jua ukalimu ulio ndani ya Kristo Yesu. Ya kwamba yeye ata kama alikuwa ni tajiri. Hallelujah. Ata kama Yesu, you know Jesus was king. Yes, that is the verse. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, alikuwa tajiri. Alikuwa ni mfanme. Yesu alikuwa ni mungu Hakuna kitu alikosa binguni Yet for your sake Only You can put your name there Useme yet for my sake Hallelujah My God Ebutu some hiyo maandiko na uweke jina yako hapo Yes for my sake He became poor So that me Through his ha, Might do what <laughs> Actually, this is not a Jewish church. This is a Gentile church in Andikiwa. Na nawambia Christo. Na hii hapa haongei kuhusu utajiri wa kiroho. Because when you read the context, he is talking about generous giving of money in church. Here will be your context. <laughs> Hello? Buwana suwe sana. So he is talking about wealth. Ujua kuna mahali kanisa ilifika. Ika kitambo muanzo kabisa. Tulikuwa watu wa mamadhena. Watu wa? Hata mtu wa kitajirika, anafukuzi wa kanisa. Kuna dugu moja rinunua motorbike. Na hiyo kanisa watu wote walikuwa na tubike tule tutu wa kupiga hivi. Haka wa kanisa hiyo. Bwana suwe sana. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Kisha ikavika mahali pegine. Watu wakaubiriwa ujiri ya utajiri ikaubiriwa vibaya. Watu wakafikiria ni kama mungu haku wanapenda wawe matajiri. Lakini wacha ni kuambie. There is something called covenant wealth. And in these last days, God is giving wealth into the hands of believers for the propagation of the gospel. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. So I will not be surprised if the richest man in Africa comes from this church. Praise the name of Jesus. It is possible because God is doing it for the sake of his gospel. Bwana anaachilia utajiri in abundance. Sababu ni kumalizia tunamalizia kazi. Sasa ni kuwana tunayenda. By the way, wale ambao wanakaa dunia hii ni kama walifika. Unafanya kila kitu dunia inataka. Wata ukorele wa roogu hau tamuishi. Bwana asfe sana. Kama ni kujipanga jipange. Yesu wako karibu kurudi. Mambo inakimbia. Praise the Lord. Na ni wakati yata wa utajiri urejeshwa kwa watu wa mungu. Na waombea neema ya utajiri. And when I pray for you, I pray that you become rich. Hakuna shida wapendwa. Hata kama ni parking, tutakosa, tutavute kuingine na kuingine. Haina shida. Mungu wanatukuzo wakati pia watu wake wamebarikiwa. Ili wale wanauriza mungu wetu walienda wapi wajue mungu yuko hai. Daudi ya risema kwa nini moyo wangu na sononeka. Haka sema kwa ni wanakuriza mungu wako wako wapi ya kaanza kuria. Haka sema wanauliza mungu wangu yuko wapi. Anaomba tokea mungu ijulikane yuhai. Naomba mungu na atoke. Ijulikane kuomba siyo ujinga. Ijulikane kutumainia mungu siyo ujinga. Ijulikane kuwacha dhambi siyo ujinga. He kuna mungu wanaweza. Haka achilia neema hati ya ufani. Katika maisha ya watu wake Ibrahimu alikuwa rafiki wa mungu Biblia inasema He believed in God Until it was credited to him as righteousness Lakini huyu Ibrahimu He was a very rich man Ebuza wama mambo ya Ibrahimu Ibrahimu alikuwa anapea chakura kila siku Watu miatatu na arubaina na tatu Daily Those were servants Ujansabu familia Praise the Lord as you read the scriptures. One time, Sodom, Mahari, nephew yake alikuwa naishi. Kulikuja wafanume waine wakaivamia. Na wakateka mari wakaenda nayo. Ibrahimu wakaabiwa. Watu wametekwa mahali loti ya naishi. Ibrahimu akachukua wafanyikazi wake peke yake. Akaeda na wao. Akashida wafanume waine. Akarudisha kila kitu ya Sodom. Na akabeba vitu zingini ya kaenda nazo. Hapo di alitoa taithi mara ya kwanza. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Yet this man was a friend of God. Kwa rafiki ya Mungu haimaanishi ukue maskini. Kwani hamuamini? Beba neema ya utajiri mpendo. It is available. This week the Lord was speaking to me and kama mengine nitawaambia baadaye. Ya kwamba tuko katika msimu wa divine elevation. Wakati wa Mungu kuwainua watu, anainua mtu literally kutoka kwa mavumbi, anamfanya akae na wafalme. Watu wanauliza Kai, kayonosho yake kiradhuti inawezekana. Nasema inawezekana. Sio masomo inapelekanga watu huko na sisemi masomo ni mbaya. Sio kujulikana na kama unajuana na wakubwa ni sawa ni baraka lakini there is a god in heaven who can raise people from the dust and make them sit with the princes there is a god in heaven ambaye ananena Isaiah 54 anasema mama maskini aambiwe panua kambi za nyumba yako kwa sababu nitakujaza na watoto na nitakubarikia na chakula hey, i pray for abadans upon the church may the redeemed of the lord walk in abadans even of wealth and riches in the name of the lord and finally a highway hii ni furaha tu highway sema highway sema tena highway kuna tofauti ya we na highway wakati u, 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 wakati tunafundishwa jinsi ya kuendesha magari bwana asiwe sana tunaambiwa kwa kuhusu minor road na major road e, kuna barabara dogo na barabara kubwa amen na kusema ukweli na wale madereva wako hapa wanaweza kuwabia ukiendesha gari kwa barabara dogo eh barabara dogo kama hii ya matangi na uendeshe gari kwa barabara kubwa kama super highway kuna tofauti praise the lord hii dogo lazima macho ukodoe kabisa kwa sababu haujui ni nini kinaweza kikatokea bwana inuliwe sana bwana inuliwe hata kama uko na gari ya kukibia then you are a fast driver kama nani barabara dogo unashidwa kuenda na ile speed inatakikana lakini barabara kubwa wapendwa iko na raha yake na waombea Mungu awape magari maandiko inasema and a highway will be there it will be called the way of holiness praise the lord i love that part a highway will be it will be called the way of holiness alafu anasema the unclean will not journey on it aijarishi amebatizwa mara ngapi hata tembea kwa hii barabara It will be for those who walk in that way. And you can know the word way has capital W. That has an implication as recorded in John chapter 14 verse 6. Yesu akasema, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one gets to the Father but by me. Praise the Lord. This is intentional. Hii Bible inaweka dabilio kubwa as intentional. Kwa sababu haizungumzii kuhusu barabara tu, inazungumzia kuhusu Kristo kama jia ya pekee ya kufika kwa baba. Hallelujah. Anasema wicked fools will not go about it. Just continue the next verse. He continues in verse 9. No lion will be there. No will any ferocious beast get upon it. They will not be found there but only the redeemed oh my god can you shout it hallelujah shout hallelujah he says only the redeemed will walk there verse 10 he says and the ransomed of the lord will return they will enter zion with singing everlasting joy will crown their hands gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away hallelujah jina la bwana linuliwe the word highway in the hebrew comes from the word kala inaitwa kala kala inamaanisha barabara iliyoinuliwa juu unaona kama ile expressway ambayo inajengwa pale Mombasa road barabara ambayo imeinuliwa juu iko juu mahali ya kwamba haina interference ya mambo mengine na bwana anasema wale nimekomboa watatembelea kwa barabara iliyo juu watatembea kwa barabara isiyo ya kawaida hey si mungu mtu na aseme thank you jesus i thank you jesus 
Ndiyo maana tunapitanga mahali wengine wanapita wanashindwa. Wanauliza na hawa walipitaje? Tunapitianga juu ya highway. It's not by power, no by mind, but by the spirit of the living God. Isaiah akasema when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. Wakati adui anakuja kama mafuriko, roho wa Mungu anatuinuliwa anatuinulia kiwango. Tunatembelea mahali panakaa kawaida kwa watu wengine, lakini tunachomoka tukiwa zaidi ya washindi. Wapendwa, sio bure kumwamini Mungu. Nasema sio bure kumwamini Mungu. Can you note these things about that road? Number one, the unclean will not pass over that road. Yaani wadharimu na waovu hawatapitia katika barabara hii iliyotengenezewa wenye haki. Praise the Lord. Kitabu tulikuwa tunaimba wimbo Mwadhani wa kwaja kaneri ata hapo bwana asiwe sana sasa wale waliokombolewa barabara yao hata maadui hawasimami may the lord remove every unclean power standing on our way in jesus name kila kitu ambayo inatungoja huko mbele ili ituzuilie kuingia kwa hatima zetu bwana anasema the unclean will not walk over it hili neno nilikwambia ni prophetic na inanena kuhusu even wakati Kristo atakaporudi kusema ukweli wenye dhambi hawataingia. Ha Paul akamwambia Timotheo wanaotenda dhambi dhambi zao zitawaongoza katika barabara zikiwapeleka jehanamu in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Lakini wapendwa hii tunaambiwa kwa hii barabara ya wenye haki wale waovu hawataipitia. Ari amahora gado gatashia kera ho ino vara matigera naomba bwana afungue mjia na kufungue macho yako ujione mahali amekuweka namba 2 anasema the fools will not walk over late praise the lord the fools na nauita wicked fools amen you know whenever the bible talks of fools Hayongei kuhusu wajinga wa masomo there's a difference between ignorance and foolishness <laughs> Ignorance ni kutojua bwana asifiwe sana hata kama tunaitumiaga kwa context ambayo si sawa Ignorance ni kuwa hauna ufahamu Foolishness ni kujua ukweli lakini unaikataa Na ukia neba umwambie hiyo ndio ujinga Usimuuliza swali ingine Praise the Lord. <laughs> Bwana ainuliwe. Unajua ukweli lakini unaukataa. Read the book of Proverbs yote. He talks so much about the foolish. He says the foolish man anaona uovu lakini anaogojea. Inasema the foolish man anaambiwa hii njia ni mbaya lakini anatembea tu kwa hiyo, anaenda kukufa. That's what the Bible says. Praise the name of Jesus and many other things you see foolishness and na ni vibaya kuwa kanisani unafunzu wa kweli lakini unapotea kama mujinga eh eh bwana asifiwe sana unajua your power comes from your relationship with god you are righteous walk with god unajua your your victory comes because you believe in god you pray you lead the word you believe in him in his promises lakini bado unaamua wewe utatembea kwa jia yako maandiko inasema the book of jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 sitasoma sababu sitaki yatoke hapo lakini i can quote it but the bible says yakomba return to the crossroads rejeeni katika makutano ya barabara na muulize mahali barabara ile ya kale tuliyotembelea iko na ni Bwana anasema lakini mkasema hatutaitembelea mkachagua jia yenu akasema nikaweka watchman wakawaambia angalieni kuna uovu inakuja lakini mkasema sisi hatutasikiza oh my god praise the lord anasema the wicked fools will not walk on that road 
May God deliver us. I say may the Lord deliver our lives. Katika jina la Yesu. Tusibebwe kama wajinga wapendwa. Then he goes on. Anasema kitu ingine. The road is safe. He barabara wapendwa is safe. The road of righteousness. Today in the morning I was reading the story of Jehoshaphat and his son Ahaziah and his son uh, Jehoram and his son Jehoash. What a special son. Na kuna utofauti kati ya Jehoshaphat na watoto wake na watoto wa watoto wake. Jehoshaphat was a God-fearing king. And when you read the story of Jehoshaphat, Biblia inasema, there was peace in the land. Amen. Wakati Ahazia alifanyika mfalme, maandiko inasema, aliwaua duguzake wote. That was the first thing he did. He killed all his brothers. Na kaanza notabia za ma, 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 wafalme wa Israeli. Huyo mfalme alieda miaka minane. Bibi inasema mungu akamkata. Lakini kwa sababu ya maagano yake na Daudi. Akasema atambakishia mtu. Praise the Lord. Kukaja watu, the Arabs. Wakawafagia wake wake na watoto wake wote. Ispokuwa moja yule mdogo akabakia. Praise the name of Jesus. May the Lord have mercy. Then his son, Badai, who kijana, na ya kawa mfanme, unfortunately, alitawara for one year only. Because he too walked in wickedness. He knew the law of God. In fact, one time, mungu alimukemea. Haka mwambia, you know your father Jehoshaphat, how he feared me and walked in my ways. But you have chosen the way of the wicked. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do not be wicked. Hallelujah. Barabara ya utakatifu wapendwa. Iko na safety. Hey, wanaoitembelea kuna mambo Mungu anawaepusha kwa neema yake. They have a God who puts a hedge of covering around them. We read in the book of Job chapter number 1 and verse 10. Biblia inasema Ayubu moja kumi kukawa na, maku, na mkutano wa wana wa Mungu mbinguni hata shetani yakaja. Na maandiko inasema Mungu akamuuliza umemuona mtumishi wangu Ayubu? Naye shetani akajibu hivi. <laughs> Ameulizwa umemuona mtumishi wangu Ayubu mwaminifu anayedipenda? Akajibu hivi. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? Praise God. Hata shetani anajuanga wale wamezungukwa. <laughs> Anajua Bwana asifiwe sana. Nasikia mwimbaji anasema shetani anatuona tukiwaga kama mo. Anajua wale ambao wamezungukwa na hedge of God. There is a way you can walk with God and he sets you on a highway that no evil can travel. Somebody say amen. Praise the name of Jesus. The book of Psalms chapter number 17 verse 8. The Bible says guard me as you would guard your own eyes. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Yani bwana niweke, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Sababu kuna baraka ya ulinzi kwa nao mtumainia bwana. The book of John chapter number 10 verse 28 and 29. Inasema, I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. These are the redeemed. Verse 29. Aha. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. Kwa hiyo barabara hakuna simba anatembea. Hakuna wanyanganyu anatembea. Yokia mutu muambie chagua utakatifu. Tusimame. I don't want to continue. There are blessings of the redeemed. Ziko baraka the walio kombolewa. Restoration. Strength for the weak. Healing. Abundance. And a highway. 